always tell everyone that the way to design a house is to design the handrail first, then you can design the staircase, and then you can feel free to design the rest of the house. So we're going to start with the most important part of the handrail, the volute. This volute's going to be made in two pieces, and you can see one of them will come down from the straight rail and go to here, and the other piece will start here and go around here. I've got a volute which is a mirror image of the one I drew right here. You can see the two pieces. This piece here is essentially level. It's a level turn. And this piece is what we call a wreath. A wreath is a piece that curves both in plan and in elevation. In plan, it makes a semi or a quarter circle. In elevation, it goes from the rake of the rail, the rake of the main rail, to level. And this joint here is just a square joint and a perpendicular to this joint is level. Now there's a very important thing we have to pay attention to while we lay this piece out, which is what we're going to do next. We're going to draw this wreath piece in elevation. But I have to talk for just a minute about what actually happens inside this wreath piece. We're going to lay it out with a system that's very, very time-honored called the tangent system. And the tangent is a line which is uh, parallel to a curve at some point. Let's, let's look at the two tangents we're going to use. We're going to lay our, our wreath out so that the tangent line coming right through the center of this joint would intersect in three dimensions with a tangent line coming from the center of this joint. Let's lay it out on paper uh, according to the drawing that we've, the plan view we've already drawn. I've turned this drawing around and taped another piece of paper underneath it. And first I'm going to draw a center line right through the center line of this. Level part right here. Now we're going to do this as an elevation, so let's find the pitch of the stair. We know that this, let's say this point right here, is where our level line here meets our pitched line here. We know that the run of the stair is 10 inches, and I'm going to draw 10 inches off on here. And we know that the rise of our stair per tread is seven and three-eighths inches. We did that by dividing the finished floor, floor to floor of the stair by the number of risers. So that's seven and three-eighths. So the center line of our handrail, seen in elevation, is going to be at this pitch here. And it's going to intersect the center of this handrail at this point. Let's draw the rest of the rail in. The rail is two and a quarter thick. So I'll go one and an eighth this way, and one and an eighth this way. One and an eighth, and one and an eighth. This line represents the bottom of the rail. And this line here represents the top of the rail. Now I can see that this is where our joint occurs between the straight rail and the pitched rail. That will be right there. And that joint is going to be a square joint. When we carve this wreath, we're actually going to carve it out of a piece and make it about three inches longer than this make it easier to carve and so our transition from straight to curve is more even. So I'll draw that joint here. Now I drew a line from the center of this level piece down here and so where that line intersects the rake line that's going to be the center of our level rail. And I can draw inch and a quarter up, or inch and an eighth up from that, inch and an eighth down, so my rail is two and a quarter thick. Oops. That represents the level part of the balloon. I can show here where the end of it is, right there, like that. 
Now we know that this meets here level two and three quarters by two and a quarter. So I'm gonna go one and three eighths here and one and three eighths here. And then this elevation view of our wreath, that rectangle is where our hand will fit. I'm gonna trace this section of rail onto my square here so we get an idea of where this rail is going. Very quickly we're going to be able to develop a pattern here that can be used to actually put on a block of wood to make this wreath, this wreath section of the hand carved glue. I want to get this piece of wood, uh, get this out of a piece of 12 quarter, which is about two and three quarters thick. So I'm going to draw the edge of a piece of 12 quarter on here. I'm going to go out one and three eighths, one and three eighths the other way. And I hope that we'll be able to fit our rail into this piece of wood. I'm pretty sure. One of the reasons we use the tangent method is to build these rails with the smallest amount of wood possible because wood is very expensive and this mahogany is also rare, so we want to use it as responsibly as we can. You can see that this is now, this piece of uh, 12 quarter is going to be wide enough to get this rail out of it. Let me just draw a line down here to define the size of this piece of wood. Draw this line here, extra hard. That will be the bottom of the rail. All right, now we know what our piece of wood for our wreath looks like from the side. Let's think about what it'll look like from the top. We know that this piece of wood, uh, by looking at our drawing, is six inches wide. Look here, this is how wide it is in the drawing, from here to here, this joint. Pretty sure that's six inches. Yep. So I'm going to draw up here six inches. Now this is going to be a top view. We're going to extend these lines here up to that point, and here also up to there. Because I want to think about what we're going to cut to make this piece curve correct. Now, in plan, this is a quarter of a cylinder. It's circular in plan, but we're cutting through it at an angle. We're cutting it through it at, at this angle right here. And when a plane intersects a cylinder at an angle, the curve that's made is an ellipse. So first thing I'm going to do is draw the plan view of the straight part of the rail here. That's where our ellipse will start. We know that our ellipse, as we cut this, will end inside at this point and the outside at this point. So we have to draw two ellipses, one of which connects this with this, and the other connects the inside from here to here. And we know that the center point of that ellipse is going to be this point right here. Let's draw those ellipses now. So I have a little tricky way to draw ellipses. I use my ellipse trammels. I happen to have these really beautiful old bronze trammel points, but you can make a little jig like this up without the trammels. Uh, and I'm going to set the distance from my pencil to my first trammel equal to this distance here, which is one half the minor axis of the ellipse. 
and I'm going to set the distance to my other trammel from this point to this point, which is one half of the major axis of the lips. I'm going to make a little square out of wood, and I'm going to line it up perfectly square with this line and with the line on the top of the wood, and I can very carefully swing an arc right down like that, right down like that, and that arc will be a quarter of an ellipse. Then I'll reset my trammels to do the inside of the ellipse. That's half of the minor axis of the smaller ellipse right there. And that's half of the major axis of the smaller ellipse. And I'll draw the other ellipse. As you noticed, my, my uh, square was a little too long. That's why I made it out of wood, and I just made a little quick trip to the bandsaw to nip a little bit off the end of it. Now we can draw this inside ellipse. All right. This pattern will now fit over a block of wood, which seen from the top is this shape here and seen from the side is this shape here. We can just fold this paper right along here. We'll glue that onto our block, and then we can go ahead and make our wreath part of our blue.